Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and today we're taking a look at the best folding survival knives that you can get your hands on right now in 2020. Let's check them out. Now we did a video not too long ago on survival knives, but that was actually concentrating on fixed blades. And indeed, for a survival knife, I would always recommend a fixed blade over a folder, but the fact of the matter is, a bunch of you were still asking for some suggestions for some good survival folders. I mean, sometimes you're not gonna be able to carry a fixed blade, and a folder certainly is more convenient. So if you can't have that fixed blade on you, these are all gonna be some good options that you can take out into the wild with you, and you're gonna be able to rely on them if you really get into a scrape. I'm gonna start on the more affordable end of things, because when I say best, sometimes you don't wanna take a really expensive folder out there. Some of you folks are gonna prefer something that's a little more knockabout, a little more affordable, and the Ontario Rat One is absolutely the place to start. Now the reason for the Rat One to be on this list, first and foremost, is the design. It's definitely very solid. You've got a nice simple drop point blade shape, and when it comes to blade shapes, I'd recommend for this style of knife, stick with something a little more conventional. Don't go uh, like hyper tactical like some folks like to do. Stick with a simpler drop point or a clip point with a kind of subtle clip to it, and it's gonna be more versatile and get the things done you need to get done in the outdoors. So like I said, the design, this knife has it, and the price is phenomenal too. These start at about 32 bucks, but actually this model right here with the foliage green handle, we've actually got on sale right now for about 23, so it's a really good deal. But that blade, 3.6 inches long, you've got OS 8 stainless steel. Not a edge retention champ compared to some of the things we're gonna look at later, but holds a respectable edge and it sharpens up very easily too. So if field maintenance is important to you, this is definitely a good choice. We've got a full flat grind, so the slicing capabilities of this knife are quite good. It's gonna work well for everything from your bushcraft stuff, your, your tasks around camp, a little bit of food prep, even hunting, thanks to the good amount of belly you've got on that blade. The handles are nice and strong too. We've got a uh, synthetic handle on top of liners and those liners are full unskeletonized for strength. And strength really is an important thing when you're taking a knife out into the woods because if you do have to rely on it, you don't want to have some uh, subpar equipment that's gonna let you down when you really have to push things hard. Liner lock holds the blade open. And as you can see, there's plenty of length on this handle. I've got slightly larger than average hands. I've still got plenty of length on the main section of the handle. These gentle curves mean even if your hands are bigger than mine, you can loop around the back end of that handle no problem. Plus, we don't have a finger choil, but we do have a nice flat spot here at the Rakasa where you can choke up in com combination with the thumb ramp there. You can get some real fine control over this blade. In addition to fine control, the grip is decent. It's not an overly aggressively textured uh, synthetic handle here, but there is a little bit of texture. Gives you a little more surface area. And then we've got a four position pocket clip which means you can carry it in any configuration you want. And since you're gonna be taking this outdoors, you'll appreciate this open-backed construction. It's gonna make it real easy to keep clean. Another strong and very affordable folder is the K-Bar Mule. Now there's a couple different versions of this. We've got some flat scaled versions uh, that start about 25. This particular one starts just under 50. And as you can see, we've got a lot more handle contouring going on right here. Because that's another one of the good things that's very important on an outdoor knife that you're going to want to be using hard. You want to have a very comfortable handle. It's even more important than a slim EDC. Uh, in that case, the ergonomics aren't as important, but you want to be comfy while you're working hard. Now, the blade shape on this knife is what I'm talking about when I say you want a subtle clip point shape. If this clip point was any more aggressively scooped out, you would get a finer point, but you're gonna be giving up a lot of strength in the tip, and I'd definitely go for the strength in this type of scenario. I'd also go with a plain edge version as opposed to the serrated edge I have here. I only brought this out actually to demonstrate. Serrations are good for when you're doing things like cutting heavier material, fibrous material like rope or things like that. But with your knife outdoors, you're probably gonna to wanna to be doing some whittling or wood carving, and those serrations tend to sit right at the spot that you're gonna be wanting to do that work. So again, I'd recommend you stick with a plain edge. But the blade shape overall on this knife works very well. We've got OS 8 steel again, and it's got a black coating on here, which OS 8 is a stainless steel, but it's not the most stainless steel in the world, so this black coating is gonna increase that a little bit. We've also got a hollow grind here as opposed to the flat grind on that Ontario, which is definitely gonna make this a favorite for folks like hunters. The hollow grind is very important or uh, very popular for that type of use. 
but it's still going to be decently strong because we've got a decent amount of blade thickness here. Not overly built like a sharpened pry bar type of construction, but still enough to give you a good amount of strength. The lock in this case is a classic lockback mechanism. As you can see here, we've got this cutout here in the lock bar release itself. And the main thing that's going to do for you when you're really gripping this knife hard and really pushing things hard, you're less likely to accidentally squeeze and disengage that lock bar in use. So it's definitely an appreciated safety feature on top of a really well-designed and very beefy folding knife. All right, moving up the price scale a little bit, I've got a folder here, which I think is kind of overlooked uh, a little more than it should be, which is a shame. I really like this design. This is the large Selkirk survival folder from Buck Knives. We've got a roughly four inch blade here using 420HC stainless steel. Again, really like the Ontario. It's a classically proportioned drop point with a nice full flat grind. Definitely a hardworking and versatile profile. Also like the rat, we've got dual liners with a strong liner lock. These are skeletonized a little bit, but they're nice and thick. So I don't think you're really giving up too much in the absolute strength on this knife either. The material on the outside gives you sort of a hybrid approach. You've got kind of a classic look with these metal bolsters, but for a little more comfort than old school wood handled knives, you've got linen micarta handles with a nice contour. Just take a look from the top down. Apart from the, uh, the hole in the middle there, it's kind of a classic fixed blade type of contour. It really goes a long way to making this a comfortable knife to push very hard. Decent amount of grip too, because they do give you a few little scallops here on the, uh, the front and the back to give you a little extra traction. And then of course, you've got that open backed construction again, again, easy to clean out and just a really classy looking knife that you're really going to be able to push. There's no pocket clip on this knife, but it does come with a belt sheath. You can see it clicks into place pretty decently. It's got a nice thumb ramp here to aid in drawing it from the material. And we've also got a nice little add on here in this ferrocerium rod that also includes a whistle on the end. So you can actually scrape this to get a shower of sparks, helps get your fire going, which is going to keep you warm, going to provide light. And it's also good for signaling just like that whistle is as well. Now, as far as striking that fire steel, I don't think the spine of this buck is quite sharp enough to strike that. You could of course use the actual edge, but I don't recommend it. What I would do, get yourself a little piece of hacksaw blade and you can include that with there. You've got your striker and then you got a bit of hacksaw blade with you as well. Nice little extra tool. Now I've kind of mentioned a little bit that strength is important because again, if you're going out and you have to rely on your folding knife, you want it to be as strong as it can be. So now we've got a few locking mechanisms that are going to kind of stand up to some of that harder use. I've got the new CRKT Parascale here. This knife is starting to get a little bit more expensive now. We're at the 129 or about the $130 mark now. And of course they call it Parascale. You can probably tell because we've got this paracord wrap on the handles. It doesn't, doesn't close off the path of the blade as you would expect. It kind of folds back upon itself. It's not something you really see on a, on a folder. You usually see people doing paracord wraps on their skeletonized neck knives. So it looks kind of cool. You could of course do your own custom wrap. It does add a little bit of traction and it softens some of the edges of this knife as well. But it's not the reason that I'm showing you this knife in this particular video. The reason being we've got CRKT's new deadbolt lock, which is pretty cool. It actually resides here with the pivot itself. You can push that in and close the blade. You see here on the back, we've got this bar and it has two hardened pins that actually stick through the blade when it's open. And that provides a lot of strength to this lock. In fact, we've actually really kind of stress tested uh, one of their deadbolt lock models in the past. We did some absolutely stupid stuff with it and it really held up quite well. The other advantage of this lock, which I think is especially important in a quote unquote survival scenario, is the fact that you can keep your fingers completely out of the path of the blade when you're operating the lock. You just push it in and you can close that blade. Now that may not seem like too big a deal like here in the studio where I'm nice and warm, but if you're out there, if you're fighting fatigue or frostbite or just sheer adrenaline, lack of energy, any of the above, it's going to be harder to manipulate the knife or any kind of fine motor functions. So having that extra bit of kind of inherent safety built into the knife that you don't have to think about is definitely appreciated. As for the blade itself, again, nice drop point profile, just over three inches in this case. So a little bit on the smaller side compared to some of these so far. And we've got D2 tool steel in this case, not stainless like some of these other options, but it is going to give you a pretty good amount of edge retention. 
and a nice toothy edge in the field, which can be useful for things like hunting game. I know hunters sometimes like a toothier edge, but in any case, it's an all around solid performer. We've got a hollow grind, but it's not super aggressive so that the edge is like a wilting flower or, every, or anything, still feels very sturdy overall. And that's really why this knife makes this list, that combination of sturdiness, that rugged build quality with that deadbolt lock combined with the comfort of the handles, which again, those are all the things I look for in a folding knife for survival. And I'm gonna show you another couple knives now that also have locks that in a similar fashion to that deadbolt lock allow you to keep your fingers out of the path of the blade. And the first is the Spyderco Shaman coming in just over $200. This is also the first American made knife we've looked at so far, which I definitely like. And this comes with Spyderco's compression lock, which is activated here from the spine. It's kind of like a liner lock, except we do have a, an actual tab that sticks into the tang of the blade rather than just being a flat surface on which the blade tang rests. And it also, like I said, you can keep your fingers out of the path of that blade. You can even flick it closed if you want. This is definitely one of the more rugged folders that Spyderco builds. Can open it very easily with that one hand opening hole. And we've got S30V blade steel, best edge retention so far out of everything we've looked at for sure. And that nice broad drop point profile with a flat grind. Now, one of the reasons I like that broader profile as you saw on this uh, on the buck earlier as well, is it gives you some options in terms of how you hold the knife. In addition to having good lateral strength because you've got a good amount of steel, you're able to power through some cuts quite easily, but also because of the broadness up here, it's easy to choke up on. If you need to do some smaller detail work, you can do that because you've got, you know, like I said, enough to grab onto there. Now the grind here is not a full flat, it's almost full flat. It comes up almost to the edge. You can see a little bit of full thickness spine there. That does mean it's gonna be a little bit stronger than it would be if it was full flat ground, but because of the height, you've still got some really good slicing geometry. I also like the stone washed finish here as scratches are kind of going to blend into that finish over time. It's just a good rugged feel overall. Now, speaking of feel, the handles here are very comfortable. We've got black G10. And as you can see, the corners of the, or the uh, corners of the slabs haven't just been knocked over. They've actually been rounded over quite nicely. So it really does nestle into the hand very well. Beyond all that, four position pocket clip again, so you can carry it wherever you wish. However, the compression lock is kind of right hand biased, so it's gonna be a little bit more tricky to use or a little bit more finicky to use with your left hand. This next design is completely ambidextrous, however, and that's the Benchmade Freak. Now there's a few different versions of this knife. The base model starts a bit above 120 and that comes with some synthetic handles with some grippy uh, inserts. But this is the model that's affectionately known as the Super Freak, coming in just over 190 right now. Now, in addition to a different handle, the blade steel here gets an upgrade as well. The base model starts with S30V, which is a good steel. We just saw it on that Spyderco, for example. Gives you a good amount of edge retention for sure. However, this one features an M4 tool steel blade. I really like that particular swap on this design in particular, because the blade steel here is a little bit on the thinner side. The reason I like the M4 here is its toughness. So despite giving up a little bit of thickness, that steel is gonna make up for that a little bit in the outright durability of it. Still gonna give you good edge performance as well. It's not stainless though, which is why we see this version come with the black coating. And that's a Cerakote finish too, which is gonna be very durable. It's not like a, a powder coat at all. And it's gonna maintain a fairly efficient uh, amount of smoothness to it. It's not gonna impede your actual slicing too much. But again, good overall drop point blade shape, plenty wide enough to choke up on right behind the tip if you need to, all around great shape. Now the handles here are a black and gray G10, gives you a good amount of durability. And I like the pop of red too on the inside, kind of a red liner with some red uh, barrel spacers. Just aesthetic, it doesn't do anything for the strength of it, it just looks really good. And of course you got a pocket clip here which is reversible for the left or the right. Tip up only though in this case, it's not like a Spyderco four position clip because if you did put it up here, it would actually get in the way of the axis lock. And this right here is what truly makes this knife strong and ambidextrous as well. You've got this hardened bar that runs through both sides of the handle, so you can access from either side just as easily, and it rests on the tang of the blade, providing a very solid lockup. The other thing I like about it is the speed of access. You can simply hold the lock bar back, flick it closed. It works the same in reverse when you're opening it as well. Now there will be some folks out there that are gonna complain about the springs in this particular mechanism uh, as a potential weak point. 
To that I say, that's a fair criticism, but if one of these springs were to fail, you've still got a second one to keep it open, and if both were to fail, you can actually take a little piece of a stick or something and wedge it in there and uh, turn it into a, you know, a non-folding a non folder at that point, but you still can wedge that open if you need to in an emergency situation. I'd personally have no hesitation with taking that particular Benchmade out, but if you are going for the absolute most strength you can get in a folder, I think these next three in particular are definitely the places to start. I'm going to start with cold steel. I've got the SR1 Lite here, which is going back onto the affordable end of the spectrum again. Now, to be honest, there's a bunch of cold steels that could have easily taken this knife's place. You got the AD10, which is one of my personal favorites. You got the new Formax Scout. It's a great option, as well as the Ultimate Hunter. All of them are great, very comfortable designs, and they feature the triad lock, which really is the underpinning of the strength of this knife. So why did I pick this knife instead of those? It's new and I felt like it. There's your answer. <laughs> That's just the one I wanted to show today. But this is the light version. There is a more expensive version with some more premium materials, but the light version is very compelling as it comes in at just about 60 bucks. You've got four inches of steel here. In this case, you've got eight CR13 MOV, although S35VN is an upgraded option if you want that. You've got that very basic clip point shape, just like I like to see for a, a clip point in a survival scenario. And they really went for strength here. I mean, you can see how thick that blade steel is. That's nearly five millimeters thick, which is quite a lot. And then the flat grind they put on this knife only goes up about midway. So you've got a lot of full thickness spine there to take a bunch of abuse. The trade-off for that, of course, is it's not going to slice quite as efficiently. But again, this design is all about strength first and foremost, which is why you see Cold Steel's Triad Lock which may look just like a lockback, and in fact, it operates just like it. You can just push it down and close, but there's some extra stuff going on underneath the handles where it's different. One, you've got a stop pin, and there's some geometric differences where they angle a few of the surfaces to help distribute force a little better, and it's gonna be naturally long wearing, it's gonna self adjust over time, and just be overall stronger than a normal lock lockback, and in fact, Cold Steel claims it's the strongest locking mechanism on the market. As far as the rest of the handles on this light version, we've got a, a GFN handle or a Grivex handle, I should say, which is their terminology for this material. It's got a light orange peel texture to the outside to give you more grip without being overly aggressive. You know, they don't want to raise some hot spots. You got a good amount of length there. My hands fit quite well. And you've also got a nice choil, eh, technically not quite a choil, but a good area, a good ramped area here in front of the finger guard where you can get your finger up there quite easily. Speaking of a finger guard, that is something I really like to see on any kind of survival knife, but especially a folder, as it's gonna help protect you from accidentally slipping forward. Now, some of these knives earlier, you can, you can see just by looking at them, have that to certain degrees, a little bit more, a little bit less, but I think this one right here on this cold steel is a particularly good example. Now, this next knife is another that's extremely tough and very strongly built, but if your tastes run a little bit more traditional, that's where this knife comes into play. This is the Topps Fieldcraft folder, which if you're a bushcrafter at heart, this is gonna be a great option for you. These are made in America. Prices start about 190 or just under on these knives. And it is a liner locking design, but you can see just how thick those liners are. Definitely provides a solid foundation for both the rest of the handle and the lockup for the blade itself. Speaking of that handle, we've got Canvas Micarta here, which is a great material for any type of outdoor folder because not only is it comfortable, but especially with this matte finish, once it gets wet, it actually starts to feel a little bit more tacky. In a way, this kind of gives you the best of both worlds in terms of the handle material. You get a little bit of that extra grip, kind of like you would with a rubber handle when it is wet, but you still have a nice, warm, inviting feel every other second of the day. You can also see here the pocket clip is reversible because we've got the, uh, the milled out section here on the front. I'll show it to you there on the back. It's a single screw design, but it's a nice beefy clip. The other thing to take note of, if you close the knife, make sure you close it first. On the front here, we've got a divot in the micarta and that's a bow drill divot. So if you need to use this knife to get a friction fire going, you can use this as your bearing block for your spindle without having to find something extra or you know tear up your hand in the process. And back to the blade itself, this is where it really shows its bushcraft roots. We've got a blade that's about 4.4 inches long, and we don't have a stainless steel like most of these other things. We've actually got 1095 carbon steel. Definitely not stainless, as you can imagine, but just a classic outdoor knife material, very historically proven to be very effective. 
It's also going to sharpen very easily when you do need to actually maintain your edge. Now the edge profile here itself, Topps calls Scandi Vex, it's sort of a hybrid between a Scandi and a convex edge. You do have just a little bit of a secondary bevel down here, uh, which actually provides the cutting edge itself, which is good because if this were just a straight Scandi, this would be a pretty high uh, angle for a Scandi grind, and you don't want to give up the durability by having the secondary edge on this particular geometry. But like I said, it's going to be real easy to maintain, especially with a strop, as you can lay it across this whole bevel right here. And that's going to keep that section, as long as you're maintaining it, it's going to help keep that from getting rusty. And of course, on the rest of the blade, you've got that black coating to help over on those spots. But it's got the heft you'd need in an emergency situation, but just an all-around great design so that you're going to love to carry it just about any time. All right, next up in our trio of overbuilt folders, we're going to go with a smaller one. This is the DPX Hest. Now there are various versions of this knife available, some made in the USA, some made in Italy. This one right here starts at 175, but there is plenty of other versions with some upgraded materials that go up from there. Still got a versatile drop point profile, but the blade here is about three and a quarter inches long. D2 tool steel here with a nice black coating to help keep rust at bay. A couple other nice features in integrated into the spine here. The jimping here is actually three different sizes, and that's supposed to act as a, a wire breaker or wire stripper. We've also got this pocket opener here, which is this cutout in the spine. It lets you catch the hem of your pocket, and it'll rotate the blade open as you draw it, which is kind of nice. And it also works as a bottle opener too, which technically makes it a multi-tool. Maybe, we'll think about it. Now the handle itself, we've got green G10 in this case, and on the back, we've got a titanium frame lock. And this particular one is one of the Italian made versions. This is actually made for DPX by Lion Steel. And for my money, that's the version to get if you're looking for a true hard use survival folder, because it incorporates one of Lion Steel's patented mechanisms, and that's the roto block right here. You've already got the titanium frame lock holding the blade open, but if you simply rotate that little wheel right there, you've actually locked the titanium lock bar in place. So you have two different things keeping that blade in place. Rounding things out, we've got a deep carry pocket clip there, as well as a glass breaker there on the end. And if you check this out, the lanyard hole will even work as a screwdriver bit driver. Now, as much as I love some of these larger knives, there is something to be said for a smaller knife like this being put into service as your survival folder, because this is a more convenient size to carry every day. This could just be a part of your everyday carry that you know, you can take out camping when you go, and if you really need to put it into some heavy use, if you get stuck in a bad situation, you've already got what you need on you, and you don't have to think about bringing anything else. All right, last but not least is actually a multi-tool. This is the Leatherman Signal, which this is really hard to beat for a multi-tool that you're gonna take into the outdoors. Reason for that is it's got some things incorporated on here that really will help out in a survival situation. I'll get to those in a minute, but first, just the normal set of tools. Of course, you've got Leatherman's famous set of plier jaws right here. On this arm, you've got your interchangeable bit driver, which is gonna be useful for all that screw driving stuff you need to do, as well as a can opener, which of course is useful for some of the, the food you might be bringing outdoors. And last but not least, you've got a nice sharpenable awl here, which is probably one of those really underrated outdoor survival tools. Really good for putting holes in things, works well as a scraper for your fire starter if you really need to. Just very appreciated because you don't see it as much as I'd like to see it in some outdoor oriented multi-tools. Now all of those tools lock open as well, which is nice. But now let's get to some of the, the outdoor oriented tools specifically. And they're actually housed, you can see them here on the outside of the handles. Now what these are, they're actually removable. And I'll take this one out first because it's removed from the inside. And we've actually got a small ferrocerium rod there that also incorporates a whistle. Again, two real important survival items that are gonna help keep you alive and get you rescued in the process. And you can use the, uh, the awl, like I said, as a striker. But in addition to that, I forgot to mention the outside accessible tools. We've also got a very effective small wood saw and the spine of that is crisp enough to use as a striker. So you're not gonna have to ruin any of your cutting edges. And that saw itself, like I said, is very effective given the size. It's a good offset tooth design that comes very sharp. It locks with a liner lock as well, so also nice and safe while you're using it. And then the tool on the other side is actually a small diamond sharpener. Now you do have to push down the lock here to remove it, which is handy. It's not gonna accidentally come loose. And you can take that off. You can touch up the blade on this tool if you need to or any other blade you might be carrying with you. Speaking of that blade, 
It is one hand openable, kind of a modified sheep's foot design with a combo edge here, uses 420 HC steel. Kind of basic stuff, but you get a lot overall with this package. Last but not least, taking a look here at the back, of course you've got the, uh, the carabiner gate here and this section will act as a bottle opener. You've also got a screwdriver bit holder there that can drive standard size screwdriver bits and a plate at the bottom for hammering, which you can use that if you need to crack open a nut or something in a survival scenario, or even just more day to day at the campsite, you can use it to drive in your tent stakes. All right, that's all I've got to show you today on survival folding knives. Make sure to let us know in the comments what your favorite one of these was, or if you pick something different for your survival knife. Now, if you're looking for some fixed blade suggestions, as I mentioned, we did do a video on that. If you wanna see that, we'll leave a link so you can go check those out as well. Now, if you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, we will leave links in the description that'll take you over to knifecenter.com. And if you're gonna buy one of these knives anyway, make sure you're signed up for our Knife Rewards program so that you can earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. I hope you're all staying safe, sane, and sanitary out there. See you next time.